Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll continue to learn about pre processing in scikit-learn and we'll talk about normalization. Uh, so, we'll first start with a kind of uh, looking at the terminology standardization, scaling, and normalization when we are talking about scikit-learn. Then, we'll look into what is normalized data, L1, L2 norms, uh, what, how is normalization done and why do we need to normalize the data and finally we'll look at one slide of a code snippet for implementing this normalization in the following video we'll do the actual coding in jupyter notebook uh, to go through the uh, python implementation in detail for normalization so in previous videos you've probably uh, learned about standardization scaling and normal and scaling so standardization or mean removal means that for any given data set we are setting the mean to zero and variance close to one and if we use a max app scalar we are converting the data that is uh, into a range minus one to one if we are using min max scalar then we are converting the data into a range zero to one now these steps uh, these methods are also sometimes called as normalizing the data but when we are specifically talking about scikit-learn here normalization has a different meaning what uh, it means here is that we are converting the data such that it has a unit norm that is to say that each the vector at each data point as a length of one and we'll look into that in more detail as we uh, go through the following slides so what is normalized data let's look at this example here where we have a set of data points uh, which are the red color dots and uh, x-axis could be uh, assume let's assume that it's feature one and y-axis we have feature two now uh, before we get into this I just want to say that the norm of a vector or magnitude of a vector or length of a vector they all mean the same thing and here for each of these data points if we draw an arrow from the origin that represents uh, so each data point can then be represented as a vector and if we calculate the length of this vector then we can use that quantity to normalize it so let's consider one point of those uh, all the data points uh, let's assume that the length of that uh, vector is z or z and if we normalize that data then the length of that vector becomes one or unit so it has a unit norm now if we do the same uh, change uh, normalization for each of those red data points then this is what we would see in a normalized data set so these all are again on this uh, scale but now um, this is length one right here so the scale this would be one and this would be one so all the data points lie around this uh, circumference of a circle so that is the normalized data uh, when we are talking about scikit-learn here we have l1 and l2 norms so the difference between the l1 and l2 norms is that for l1 when we are calculating this length of the vector uh, from uh, so length of the vector would be all this we are using uh, this formula so we are adding th the x and y for uh, those would be the coordinates of that particular data point whereas when we are looking at l2 to calculate the length we are using the we are calculating the euclidean distance so for the uh, using the coordinates we are taking the x squared plus y squared and taking the square root of that sum so that is the difference between l1 versus l2 norm is normalization let's look at this uh, data uh, example here this is a three by two matrix and here we have two columns so 
each column is representing a feature so let's call this feature one let's call this feature two so here we have uh, sample one and sample two sample three so these are samples so in the following slides when we talk about features we are talking about the columns and when we are talking about samples we are talking about the rows uh, so that's just uh, uh, something to remember now for l2 normalization let's start with feature normalization first here we have the data set that we saw earlier now for performing the normalization what we do is for each feature we are taking the square of each value and adding them up as shown here and then taking the square root of those values as shown here and then using that value to divide each num each of the data points and thus in uh, we can get the normalized values as shown here so the one the value of one is normalized to a 0 0.267 and so on and so forth for all the other values similarly for the second column we would do 30 square plus 40 square plus 50 square and then square root of that and then using that in denominator to divide these values to get the normalized values and so uh, this is the normalized uh, array that we have here so what we have done is we have brought down the differences in the ranges of these two values so these values are less than 10 and these were much greater than 10 however after normalizing they are all in a range be below one and for l2 normalization if we add these normalized values in this way by taking a square and then taking squ a square root of that then they add up to one so that's what uh, we mean by a unit vector so here we saw this length becomes one and that's what exactly we have here so the length is one similar to feature normalization uh, we can also go ahead and do a normalization for sample and most most of the time when we are referring to normalization in scikit-learn by default it would be this way so by samples so instead of rows now we are taking the value digit numbers from the sample so square of one plus square of 30 in square root of that and using that in denominator to divide 1 and divide 30 and thus from this we get uh, these values right here so 30 is changed to uh, 0 0.999 and then 1 is changed to 0 0.033 again when we uh, take this sample vector and uh, add that together we get a final output which is equal to one and this is again uh, l2 normalization now moving on let's look at what l1 normalization is for l1 normalization uh, we'll again look at the samples so we are looking at the uh, rows here instead of taking the square and square root we are simply adding these numbers so 1 plus 30 uh, then 1 divided by 1 plus 30 and 30 divided by 1 plus 30 and so we get this sample vector and when we add that sample vector it adds up to 1 so that those are the key differences between L2 normalization and L1 normalization now let's look at an example where we can look at why normalizing a data could be necessary and this is most common usage is and it's in text classification here we have uh, three types of text uh, three strings uh, first one is food uh, talks about football second one talks about train third one talks about uh, sports and in sports it does mention football so we uh, the classification task is such that we want to see if this particular last set of words 
are they a text sports is it closer to text football or is it closer to train we know that it's closer to football but how would we uh, go about uh, using that in machine learning so the first step is we look at the length of each of these so the first text has 58 words second has 62 and the last one has 11 words in it now without going into the details what we essentially do is uh, we try to find the distances of each of those uh, group of words uh, in each of those uh, uh, football train and sports and when we calculate the euclidean distance as we can see here is smaller than uh, uh, this one so what it suggests is that football is close to more closer to train than it's closer to sports and the reason why that is, why that becomes the case is because of the length of each of those vectors and therefore normalizing helps in this case so after we normalize the data what we can see is that now uh, the sports is smaller distance so sports is closer to football as we can see here so this is just one use case where uh, uh, where the normalization step can be used now let's look at another uh, way to visualize how, how normalization works and here we have on the left hand side a set of random data points and on the right hand side is the normalized l2 normalized data set and here we can see that all the data points are now along this uh, circumference of this circle and it has a, a length uh, the vector length is one from the origin so that's how the normalized data would look like uh, if you plot it now moving on from here if you look at this data set here we can see on the left hand side there are four clusters and uh, each of those clusters are in different quadrants of uh, this particular plot now when we normalize the data in this case we can see that these two data points uh, because they are in the same di uh, same quadrant they move in the same direction and therefore they are uh, they become very close to each other after they are normalized whereas these uh, these data points the green ones they move farther away from the red data points so that's just something to remember if you uh, normalize the data uh, using this method then you probably want to be aware that this is a possibility where you could think of uh, if these were to be considered as closer data points then this method of normalization may not be the best way to work with that data because here after normalizing if we calculate the euclidean distance uh, the distance between the blue and the red would be more uh, would be lesser as compared to the distance between the red and the green stars right here so that is uh, one example to remember now let's look at the code that uh, we would uh, use to implement this and i'm starting to put this slide from this video uh, if you like this uh, method then uh, please let me know in the comments below we'll go into the detailed implementation in the following video as well so first we want to import the library numpy and then we'll import the library sklearn uh, for pre-processing and after that uh, we are creating a data so here we have a random set of integers created and we are creating 20 integers and the array size is 10 rows and two columns so 
the one way to do the normalization is by preprocessing.normalize and we specify the data and the norm as shown here and then there is another way uh, to normalize where uh, we create this transform we use this transformer api and uh, first we uh, create this instance for transformer and then use that along with fit transform uh, to fit on the data to get the normalized values so there is this one method and then there is the second method to uh, do the normalization that was it for this video i hope you learned what is the difference between standard scalar and our different types of scaling methods and normalization in scikit-learn you also learned what is the difference between l1 and l2 normalization and looked at uh, the use cases where normalization could be used and finally we looked at a uh, short snippet of code to implement normalization using scikit-learn in python please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video where we'll implement this code uh, in jupyter notebook uh, thank you